Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the Wanamaker show in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm gonna give my stories of the show, what happened, what I saw, and if I think the show was really worth going to. So if you haven't heard, there's a gun show in Tulsa, Oklahoma twice a year that's put on by a guy uh, whose name is Joe Wanamaker. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty big show. I think it's the biggest show in the United States, or at least the biggest show inside of one building in the United States. The building's huge. I heard that uh, they actually have um, they have like dirt racing, dirt bike racing inside. They push in dirt inside of this building because especially being there, it's so massive. Uh, it's it's really quite astounding. It's really really hard to actually see everything in one day. So it's really one of those shows that you want to go to uh, both days just to kind of make sure. You know, you see everything. Uh, it's easy to miss stuff, you know, in just one day. Now, I got to the show at about 7.30 in the morning on Saturday, and the lines were just astounding, just how long these lines were wrapped around the building. There's actually, I think, two entrances where people were coming in. And so this is not even all the people that were going in. And this is, you know, 30 minutes before the show even opened. Uh, and that's how many people there were. So there's really quite the wait in getting in. Um, luckily, I had a dealer pass, so I didn't have to wait in line. I was able to get in. Uh, in fact, I went to the show on Friday. Uh, I, I, showed, I got to, into Tulsa on Friday, so I got to, got to see a little bit of the, the show setting up. And um, it's really, the, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. If you go, you, you just kind of have to expect to wait in line quite a bit, especially if you want to get in the first thing in the morning. Um, I've, it's the longest lines I've ever seen at a gun show. Now, you probably want to know about the prices at this show. And uh, to start off with the bad news, prices were high. They were stereotypically like gun show prices high. They were like, I know what I got, Sonny, high. They were like crazy internet plus premium retail price high. I mean, without exaggerating, I think 90% of the mill serps at that show were were overpriced. I mean, whatever you think is like the highest kind of crazy internet price a certain gun would ever have gotten to, I think that's what they were pricing their guns there. I mean, every, I mean, P38s, like a matching German P38 pistol, like a wartime gun, you couldn't get into for like under $1,500. They just, they just weren't there for like a matching one. Luger started about, for like a mismatched commercial Luger is like $1,500. I mean, the, the, it was just, I don't know what it was, but it was like that for like about 90% of the ones there. There were a couple vendors there that were pretty fair on their prices. And you kind of know what happens to those vendors whose, whose prices are pretty fair. They kind of sell out. Now, one of the things that I think is happening there, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand it, why, why this would happen, why other vendors are doing this. But especially like on Friday. So Friday when everybody's setting up, a lot of the vendors are buying stuff. And even on Saturdays, I've, I've heard about this. Um, so here's an example. Uh, one of the vendors with, who's like a big money vendor, I'm not gonna name him, but he's got a website and he buys a lot of stuff on, on his, he buys and sells a lot of stuff online. Uh, he went around and was buying up guns from other vendors that were like normal internet retail price. He found a guy that was selling some Johnson rifles on his table. These two Johnson rifles, and uh, he paid about six thousand, six thousand, seven thousand dollars a piece for them, which to me that's about like the going price of a Johnson. And he put them on his table and was asking like nine and ten thousand dollars for them. And that's just the way that show seems to be. Um, there's a lot of big name vendors there. I mean, every auction and every gun website you can think of, like the big ones, is at that show. And I mean, if there's anything close to a good deal there, the other vendors are buying it up and, it, and then putting on their table and asking more money. And it's a little, it's a little disheartening. So I think there's like, there's a lot of that going on. So everything there is just automatically more. Like there's a lot of guns that I could buy like at an auction or on GunBroker or uh, online at another website for a lot cheaper than what they were asking for their guns there. And, you know, they weren't moving. I was, you know, I went around on both days from, from Saturday morning to, you know, Friday right before they closed. And I saw a lot of the same guns. I mean, they, they really weren't selling there. So I don't know. Um, you're going to see a lot of those, a lot of new guns come up on different like online gun sellers stuff that they bought there. So here's one of the things that happened to the show on Friday. So this is kind of, people say like Friday's the day to go to that show. Uh, that's where all the good deals happen. And, and I really think it is. So um, apparently somebody showed up, they were, I guess, a, a dealer or a vendor, 
and they were liquidating somebody's collection of G43s. And the numbers I heard, it was somewhere between 20 and 30 G43s that they were liquidating from this collection. And the prices that I heard was like somewhere from like two to three thousand dollars a piece. They were they were asking for for their G43s, and they just immediately got bought up. Um, other vendors were buying them like five, ten at a time. Um, so you'll start to see a lot of these G43s, I bet, pop up on various websites. Um, but uh, when I, as I walked around the show, I saw quite a few of these G43s on other tables. And that's just what guys do. Um, I mean, two to three grand, that's a, that's a little low now, I think, for G43s nowadays. Um, so, like, they're, they just bought them and then put them on their tables and, and marked them way up. The lowest price one there was like $3,800. And I think one of the most expensive was around five grand. And that's what people were doing. They bought those, you know, low, low price G43s and just upped them by a thousand or two thousand dollars or whatever. And that's what they were asking. A lot of them had mismatched parts. Um, a lot of them had uh, repro mounts and original scopes on them, which is pretty cool. But, uh, I, you know, I, I, that, that's just kind of what you find at that show. Just a lot of dealers buying everything from each other. If there's anything that's a good deal there, it's more than likely going to be bought by another vendor and put on their table and, and up to the price. Um, uh, again, it's just, it's just kind of nuts. That's something that I, that happens at every gun show, but it seems amplified at this one because I think the, the dealers there, that's, that's just their whole thing is, you know, flipping mill serps and dealing with mill serps. They're able to buy, you know, like if that person that bought 10 G43s, you know, that's what, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 that they dropped. So um, it's, it's, it's just, it's pretty nuts. And that, that's what you run into there, unfortunately. So not a whole lot of good deals. Now there was like a handful of decent deals at the show. Thankfully, it wasn't a complete bust. Um, and really it was like, it came down to, there's two vendors at this whole show. There was two vendors there that actually had decent priced mill serps, uh, that you're able to negotiate with and everything. So, I mean, out of, you know, thousands of tables, two good ones. And that's kind of what you have to expect with this place. So I went and I, I zoomed through it as fast as possible to try to find these deals. Um, luckily they were still there when I went back. And so I was able to, you know, talk and negotiate. Um, so I picked up some some pretty cool stuff. Um, I got a um, got an Inglis high power, which is pretty neat. You know, like a World War II Inglis high power. Um, it's been FTR'd in, in '62. Um, I got an Italian Glacenti pistol, which is um, you know pretty neat early pistol. I'm kind of getting into these old funky guns. Uh, and then I got a Brazilian 1908 34. Uh, rifle made by CZ. So, um, you know, this isn't a super common gun. So I was happy to find it there at a, at a good price. Uh, honestly, I, I came pretty close to leaving there empty handed. I got a few other little odds and ends, like, uh, you know, a couple mags and a little bit of ammo, stuff like that. Um, but I feel like you almost have to expect to pay retail for whatever it is that you want when you go there. So, if you're looking at going, I just want to set that expectation with you. Um, if you want something, you know, it, like you have one specific gun or model or whatever, like if you're looking for that niche item, it'll probably be there, right? If you're looking for like a rare, early, whatever version of something, it'll probably be there, but expect to pay for it. You're not going to find a great deal there. It seemed like everybody knew what they had there. Um, you know, it was a pretty, pretty educated crowd. Um, now on the flip side of that, if you're looking to sell, if you're looking to go to that show to actually sell something, boy, I'm warning you, those guys are, n no, like they're not, they're not going to pay you for what you have. They're not going to pay you anywhere close. Typical of gun shows, right? Everyone's got to have a profit margin and everything, but I've never seen it that way before. I mean, you could show these guys like a mismatched P38 and they would, they'd want to give you like 500 bucks for it or, or they would just hand it back. They wouldn't even be interested in it at all. Like, oh, it's mismatched. You know, they'd, they'd hand it right back to you. Um, so like it, your stuff has got to be kind of primo if you're looking at trading it there and getting anything close to what it's worth. I mean, really, especially if you're going to be walking around selling it, I don't, I don't think I'd recommend carry you bringing something, especially like a big rifle or whatever there and, and trying to sell it. Um, it's it's going to be pretty hard, you know, of course, People sold quite a bit of stuff there. It's not like it's impossible, but 
I don't think I would do it. Not after my experience. Um, like there was a guy who had a oh, story. Uh, there's a guy who had an English high power on his table in a case and he wanted, uh, he wanted about $3,000 for, for an English high power. Um, but when somebody offered him an English high power uh, on a trade deal, he offered that person like five or six hundred dollars for the same English that he had in this case for three thousand um, dollars. That's just what you're going to run into there, and it's insane. And I mean, it's like that with with a lot of these guys. So, <sighs> kind of sound like a negative Nancy here, but I mean, that's just that it is what it is. There, just you know, be ready to have that. Um, really, I think it's one of those things where cash is king bring cash there. Don't expect to, you know, that them to have ATMs there. There are quite a few ATMs, but I'm, I'm sure they ran out. Just a high volume of, of money is being, you know, turned over there. So cash is king. Bring your own cash and, uh, you know, money talks. Now, if I had to grade this November 2021 show, um, I think I'd give it like a B minus. I mean, there was, there was a good turnout of vendors and everything. Um, if if you're if you're just wanting to go there and spend an afternoon or whatever, like I, I mean, if you just spend an afternoon, you're not going to see it, but just a fraction of the whole place. But if you were if you wanted to like spend a day of it and look around and just see some cool stuff that you'll probably never see anywhere else, it's good for that. You'll see a bunch of cool rare stuff, a lot of really expensive stuff. Um, so it's cool for that. If you want something, you're going to have to pay top money for it. It's not really a great show to get good deals at, unfortunately. You, it can be done, but you, odds are you're not going to get any great, fantastic deals there. You can find what you're looking for, most likely, but you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, so that's kind of why I'd give it a B minus. I'd give it like an A, maybe, if there's more deals. Um, if there, there's, there's good stock, there's great inventory at that place for mill serps. Like you, you just about every type of mill serp, you know, most common ones that you can, that you could be looking for are going to be there. Um, you know, if, if there wasn't a good turnout of mill serps, I'd give it like a C, something like that. But I'd say like a B minus. Um, the, the vendors, I talked to somebody else who was working there and he, he kind of described the show as being like weird. Like it just kind of felt weird. Um, and I kind of got that vibe a little bit too. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this post-COVID world or, or something like that, but um, it was an interesting show. Um, you know, I, I recommend going just to kind of hang out with guys. You'll, you'll meet some cool people. Uh, there's quite a few good, you know, eateries inside the place. There's like, like, eight, like ten different types of eateries just all inside of this one gigantic building. So, you know, you'll have a good time. So. If you're looking at just having a good time and maybe not spending money, you know, go ahead. Especially if you live close to it, I, I think it's a must-to-go-to show. But like, if you live far away and you're gonna have to, you know, buy a plane ticket there and everything, if you have a lot of costs involved with going, and maybe you're looking at getting a good deal to help kind of absorb some of that cost, it's not, it's not that kind of show. I don't, I don't think. So I hope this helps you decide if you want to go to the Wanamaker show in the future. Uh, they have them every April and November. Uh, they didn't have any in 2020 for obvious reasons, but um, if you're looking at them, you know, April, November, I'm not sure which one's better. I've only been to the November show. So um, there you go. So if you're going to carpool and like kind of split the cost, you know, like in a hotel room and stuff like that, um, it might be worth it that way. But, you know, set your expectations accordingly. Probably set them low. I think that's the key to happiness, just setting low expectations you know, when it comes to, when it comes to gun shows and stuff. But, um, yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching guys. I, I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about this types of videos. I, I appreciate your feedback as always, and I'll see you next time.